It's summer, and here we are at Fenway Park in Boston watching the Sox. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Only bummer, of course, is the price of beer. What can you do? I can let you buy the next few rounds. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why we pregame, that Jeff. Is good point. That's why we pregame. All right, so the Red Sox are just doing eh, okay this year. Their record puts them in the middle of the American League East standings, but there's still plenty of season left to make up some ground and get into the playoffs. So if you could build a Red Sox team from all the Red Sox players throughout their history, dating all the way back to 1901, when they were one of the first eight charter franchises, who would you pick? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I guess I'd have to think of some of the most famous players off the top of my head. Sure, makes sense. Uh, you'd have to say Babe Ruth. Of course. Right? Uh, Big Poppy, David Ortiz. Yep. Um, Wade Boggs, Carl Ustremski. Yep, of course. Cy Young, Pedro Martinez. Those are some of the biggest names in the sport, no question. Oh, and considering the tunnel that's right up the road from us on the Mass Pike, you have to include Ted Williams. Of course, the legend who once endorsed Moxie Soda served his country in two wars and was considered the greatest baseball player ever. Could you imagine if we could put all those guys on the field at the same time? I mean, we can't. Some of them are dead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not so fast there, Ray. Maybe we can get Ted Williams on the field again one day. Dude, he died 20 years ago. You know, technically you're correct, but there might be a loophole here. We've come to Boston to search for Ted Williams' frozen head. I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 359 of the New England Legends podcast. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. We do that with our From the Vault each Monday and a new episode each Thursday. Most of our story leads come from you, so please reach out to us anytime through our website. So we'll go searching for the frozen head of a baseball legend right after this word from our sponsor. So Ted is not dead. <laughs> well, the legal definition, he's dead. But his family believes that's just a temporary status that will change one day. Okay, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard. And it's going to get a lot stranger. I bet. All right, let's start with a little more about the baseball legend Ted Williams. He was born in 1918 in San Diego, California. He grew up playing baseball and joined the Boston Red Sox in 1939. Right away, he set himself apart. In 1941, he had a batting average of 406, which is crazy. In fact, he was the last major league player to ever bat over 400 in a season. Think about that. Nobody has done that in over 80 years of the sport. Right? In 1943, he put his baseball career on hold to serve three years in the U.S. Navy during World War II. He came back in 1946 and picked up where he left off. He won the American League MVP award and played in his only World Series. During 1952 and 1953, he returned to active military duty to serve as a Marine combat aviator during the Korean War, then returned to baseball where he played until 1960. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1966, which was his first year of eligibility. They called him Teddy Ballgame, the Kid, the Splendid Splinter, and the Thumper. <laughs> Nicknames were just better back then. Right? From 1969 to 1972, he served as team manager for the Washington Senators and the Texas Rangers. And in 1991, President George H.W. Bush awarded Ted Williams with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Patriot, veteran, mm. baseball legend, Moxie Soda spokesperson, <laughs> Ted Williams did it all. He did. And we have the Ted Williams Tunnel in Boston. The guy is practically immortal already. That's true. His name won't be forgotten anytime soon. But... He may be immortal in another way, too. Like, literally immortal. Well, now, how does one do that, Jeff? To find out, let's head back to the year 2002. It's June of 2002. George W. Bush is president. A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton is number one on the radio. Scooby-Doo is number one in the box office. And the baseball season is in full swing nationwide. But for baseball legend Ted Williams, things aren't so good. No, they're not. Ted Williams is suffering from cardiomyopathy. It's a heart condition, and it only gets worse. He had a pacemaker installed in November of 2000 and underwent open-heart surgery back in January of 2001. It's now late June of 2002, and the 83-year-old Ted Williams, he's struggling. They're bringing him to Citrus Memorial Hospital near his home in Citrus Hills, Florida. At 83 years old, he's led a heck of a life. Even the great ones need to move along sometimes. I hope he's comfortable and not in any pain. I get that. And the word is, Ted Williams' wishes were for a cremation after his death. In fact, a Massachusetts sports memorabilia collector has a handwritten letter from Williams dated December 19, 1991. 
Go ahead and give this highlighted part a read, Ray. All right. It says, quote, it is my wish that no funeral or memorial service of any kind be held and that my remains be cremated as soon as possible after my death. I want you to see that my ashes are sprinkled at sea off the coast of Florida where the water is very deep. It's now July 5th and Ted Williams takes his last breath at Citrus Memorial. There's a lot of commotion at the hospital right now. People seem to be in quite a hurry considering the man in the room is beyond help. Right. That's the thing. Though Ted's wishes were for a speedy cremation, his son John Henry and daughter Claudia have a different idea. They claim they convinced their father in his final days to have his body cryogenically frozen so that when a cure for cardiomyopathy is found, he can be thought out and live again. And they have a signed letter to prove it. Wait, what now? <laughs> so have you ever seen a fish or a frog frozen in the ice on a pond or a lake? I have actually as a kid. When the spring comes, they just swim right off. Right. It's a kind of suspended animation, except fish and frogs are cold-blooded. The ice is only about 32 degrees. Cryogenics is a whole other level. So John Henry and Claudia convinced their dad to do this? They claim they have a family pact signed by the three of them saying they want to be placed in biostasis after their deaths so one day the family can be reunited and live again. Some suspect maybe the kids tricked their dads into autographing something he really shouldn't have signed. But either way... Folks are in a big rush to get the body of Ted Williams over to the Alcor Life Extension Foundation. They've loaded the body of Ted Williams into an ambulance. And now they're racing to the airport. The jet is taking his body to the Alcor facility in Scottsdale, Arizona. Time is of the essence when it comes to biostasis. Now, in a perfect world, you'd put a body into stasis while the person is still alive. There's just one tiny problem with doing it that way. Uh, let me guess. That would be murder. <laughs> that would be a murder indeed. Even if the person consents. But if you can't get the person while they're still alive, you do need to get to it ASAP after death because decomposition starts immediately. Once Ted Williams arrives in Scottsdale, his body is rushed into surgery. Their doctors surgically remove William's head in a process called neuroseparation. They just placed his head into a container of liquid nitrogen, instantly freezing the splendid splinter's head to just above absolute zero. Okay, they're now placing his headless body into a nine foot tall cylinder also contained with liquid nitrogen. And now Ted Williams is completely frozen, where he will remain until there's a cure for, you know, well, death. The cost for this unique afterlife experience is $136,000. And what you're buying is only a theory. Well, what do you mean? Well, the crazy thing is that cryogenics have been around since the late 1960s. That's when the first human corpse was frozen. Now, so far, no one has been able to freeze any animal, human or otherwise, and reanimate it after. Then why would anybody ever agree to get this done? The idea is that at some point in the future, they'll figure this out. And there your corpse will be waiting to get thawed out and reanimated. So this could literally take centuries, maybe even millennia. It could. So Ted Williams is really playing the long game here. Plus, the word is his head cracked open multiple times during the freezing process. So if they ever do have a way to thaw and reanimate, he's going to look like a Frankenstein monster. And that brings us back to today. So Ted Williams has been frozen for 22 years now, and there's still no cure for the deep freeze, or for death for that matter. <laughs> the funny thing about death is that it's really hard to define. I just gave a talk on death in Iowa last week. I had to look up some old definitions. So in 1768, the definition of death was when the soul leaves the body. Okay. Which is kind of a religious view on mm. it. But as the age of enlightenment settled in, medical science progressed, the next working definition was that death is the absence of life. That's hardly a way to define something <laughs> by saying what it isn't. I completely agree, but that was the best they could do. And that's how it held for almost 200 years. It was kind of like pornography. You know it when you see it, right? <laughs> right. Then in 1981, they finally came up with an accepted legal standard. It reads, quote, an individual who has sustained either one, irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions, or two, irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain, including the brain stem, is dead. A determination of death must be made in accordance with accepted medical standards. Okay, well that sounds more accurate to me. Yeah, but there's still a problem with it. There are rare cases that fall just outside the definition. 
like a person who seems to have no brain function and they're breathing thanks to machines. So the family says they're going to pull the plug and disconnect everything. But then the body keeps breathing, meaning some tiny part of the brain is still functioning. Is that person alive or dead? They can't feed themselves or do anything. They'll need to be fed by a tube to keep existing this way. I guess some would argue that they're alive, but not living. And I'd agree with that. And yet our laws state you can't euthanize a person in that state of being. Though, if they have a living will, you could stop feeding them and let them die of dehydration and starvation, which seems horribly cruel if the body in question can still feel anything. I really didn't think that we'd be coming to the Red Sox game in Boston today to have such a depressing conversation (laughs) about what it means to be dead. Uh, Right? I get it. (laughs) So anyway, if you extend that definition far enough, and I should point out, I'm no lawyer, could you say that a cryogenically frozen person who has a chance, even if it's the most remote chance, of being revived one day... Is that person dead? I'm sure the step after that is the government saying, okay, fine, then Ted Williams better keep paying his taxes. (laughs) So we've just jumped from baseball to lawyer ball. (laughs) I love it. And the waters just get murkier for sure. I guess the real moral of the story is no matter how bad the Red Sox season is ever going, we always have hope that one day they'll be able to reanimate old number nine, the splendid splinter, and trot him out to save the season. And that takes us to After the Legend, where we dig deeper into this week's story, sometimes veer off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our MVPs, most valuable patrons. Our Patreon patrons help us out with all of our hosting and production costs, our marketing, travel, everything else it takes to bring you two stories each week. Just three bucks per month. And for that, they get early ad-free access to new episodes, access to our entire archive of shows, bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear, and discounts on our events and products. If you can help the cause, please head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. To see some pictures, Ted Williams and the cryogenic tanks, click on the link in our episode description or go to our website and click on episode 359. Are there pictures of his head in the... uh... There, if you look online, there are, um, I think, artistic depictions (laughs) where it's awful. I'm sure. It's really scary. Um, But uh, most people say, like, that's not really what it looks like. No. Um, it, it, this whole thing feels like a scam. Well, sure, you're you're literally waiting for a cure for death. I think I would ask for more than 136. That's the only thing that's keeping me from thinking this is a scam. Well, well so it's, it's such a small amount of money. I agree for all the work that goes into it. Right. So 100. I mean, it's storage it's, alone. It's a big chunk, right? I don't have it oh, lying sure. around. Yeah, yeah. But, but any celebrity would. Any but, celebrity. But but like, let's say you went to a warehouse and said, "I want to rent some warehouse space, just um, you know, uh, 10 feet by three feet by three feet." Yeah. Right. Um, they would say like, okay, well, we have a huge warehouse. I'll rent you that space for um, 10 bucks a month. Sounds like a deal, mm. right? Okay, so 120 bucks a year. Not too bad, sure. right? For just one little corner of the warehouse. Yeah, I might need it for 5,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly like, Longer than you'll be around. 5,000 times, you know, the storage space, but they need electricity. They need liquid yeah. nitrogen. Imagine like there's a power outage. I know they have backup <laughs> generators and stuff like that. What if they go out of business? Well, right. It's all in the contract somewhere because oh, it has to be. What if they they demolish the building and and they go into bankruptcy? Yeah, they can't work anymore. Somebody dies. The whole team dies, and poor Ted's just sitting there waiting for a bulldozer. Okay, wait. And centuries from now, the people in there thaw out and discover they're the smartest people in society, oh. and then. There, we just we just discovered a movie here. We just discovered a movie. It's called Idiocracy. Idiocracy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone already wrote this Shoot. movie. Damn it. Mike but Judge. It could be a horror movie. <laughs> Especially if he comes out looking the way he did. Or a How comedy. would he get his head back on? Well, that you know, I'm taking a little, little, little magic. Um, by the way, uh, I'd read so many like conspiracy theories about this process. Allegedly, his head was removed by mistake. <laughs> that that the body was supposed to be frozen intact entirely, and then they they did this separation, whatever. What does it matter? I still think reanimating the dead, and let's say they could, let's say 5,000 years from now, they can say like, sure. great, thaw them out. Or the aliens can do it. Exactly. And we can get we can get them going again. We yeah. can get them going. Would he have his memories? Would he have any, would he know how to talk or do anything? Yeah, that's a good point. And, and let's pretend, by the way, let's pretend he did have his memories and he, he remembered speaking English circa 2002. Mm. Five, six, seven hundred years from now or a thousand years from now, 
you would not be able to speak English with someone in this country. Oh, probably not. The, the language changes that yeah. fast. Think of old English from yeah. like three, four hundred years ago when you hear like, you can make out sort of gist in the sure. words here and there. But it sounds odd, odd, really odd. Add another 500 years to that. You you couldn't communicate with someone. That's true. That, you know, like today, the, the words would be so different. The language would have evolved so much. Um, but, um, but, but I get it. We all kind of want to be immortal. You know, we want to... I think, but then... The fear of waking up to a brand new world. Or you, I mean, it could go either way. Where you know nobody. Right. You, you know, like... You're, you're a freak of nature all of a sudden. You're beyond a freak of nature. You don't know anything or anyone. I would imagine you'd be studied, too. Yeah. You come out of that. They're not just going to let you go. You've They're going to do a lot of studying. You've got germs in your body that have been eradicated <laughs> years ago, and you yeah. could literally be a threat to the world. Right. Um, yeah. You're too much. I think it's too much. Just let me go. But the fact that this business exists... That, that, that Ted Williams is just the most famous one that, you know, we know of that, that uh, did and, this. And what if you believe in what you believe in and perhaps you believe in a higher power and a higher place? Yeah. And he's stuck where he is now. <laughs> and like in 5,000 years, he finally makes it to the other side. Yeah. And God's like, dude, what'd you do? Ted, we had We've ball been games. We've missing you for 5,000 yeah. years. We had this amazing team put together. Yeah. You know, we and... retired baseball 3,000 years ago. You missed out on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to play cricket now. <laughs> cricket came back. I don't know what to tell you. People right? love cricket. I mean, you're just, you're playing with... Uh... You're playing with fire, so to speak, or, well, or ice. Ice. <laughs> well, that's that's the right. We, at what point have we... Already, many would argue we're into God's realm anyway. Yeah. Right? Like, And so this is this is some, this is is Frankenstein. The movie yeah. was written... Uh, the, the story was written over a right. hundred years ago, you know? Um, are, are we into a realm of, like, pure uh, fantasy? And and also, the but, but this is a business. There are people that are doling out. I'm sure the price is more now than 136000 That was 20 years ago price. Mm. I'm sure, but but someone who's totally rich saying, yeah, I think one day they'll be able to, you know, start me back up, and yes, I want to do this. It's scary, too, when you when you see firsthand that the world is getting dumber and dumber, and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. we're not getting any smarter. This is never going to happen. Right. Ted Williams would be the smartest person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Unless AI takes over, and the, like, we don't need people, but as an experiment, let's yeah. thaw this one out. Now, his son and Claudette, were they... Um, well, so the questionable s- people to begin with. The you think? son died years later, and I, I forgive me, I, I don't recall if he went through with it or not. Oh, he um, was going to do it, and, and there was lawsuits within his family saying he never consented I to that. this. Yeah, um, th- 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 this, he was swindled by his kids who said, "Look, just sign this thing." He thought probably I was signing one more autograph for somebody, and um, meanwhile he had signed some pact saying, "Yes, I want this frozen." What would the kids get out of that? I mean, like in, in a selfish way, I guess. I I, th- I think maybe you know you know how rich kids are; they're crazy. They, they, right. They're just like, hey, we could freeze dad and have him forever, and we could all do this. And but we that's could... a nice sentiment, isn't it? I mean, to say they swindled dad, although you know he made his he made it clear that he yeah. wanted to be spread over the ocean, not the shallow part of the ocean, right? Very deep. Had the letter said, "I want to be cryogenically frozen, <laughs> where hopefully one day I can live again." Yeah. Okay, fine. He's he's rich, eccentric, famous. He can do it. You know, yeah. if that's what you choose to do. But when your kids are deciding for you. I don't know. I think um, I think he was sort of possibly the, the the kid caught on to some idea that he thought made sense. Yeah. And um, but yeah, you got to think that through. Like it's gonna be quite a conversation when they all meet up in five thousand years. I'm I'm against animal testing, especially when it comes to completely frivolous crap like this. Yeah. However, a fish, a frog. Sh- sure. Show me it works on like a <laughs> well, no no. Show me it works on a warm blood. Oh yeah, yeah yeah on a warm blooded creature. And I'll, I won't what say, what, don't know, because someone will yell at us. <laughs> don't, don't pick one. There's someone who lo- loves every animal out there. Because I would have said snake, fish, frog. But I those are like cold-blooded. Those. You're right, you're those right. Are, can't, can, we got to pick a, a bat, warm blood. Maybe, oh, there's nothing wrong with bats. And then COVID comes out 100,000 years from now. How about raccoons keep getting into my, my trash? Fine, let's go with raccoons. Okay. Someone out there has one as a pet, and we apologize. <laughs> but, okay, fine, take a raccoon, freeze him yeah. it, it, a, while alive, I guess, you know, again, forgive us. Um, Bury him in the pet cemetery. Oh, that movie well, too. Well, that's different. Now you're in a different <laughs> realm. So freeze him in liquid nitrogen, you know, where you're you're literally a, a raccoon sickle, and then show <laughs> us that you can wait a week, yeah. just wait a week, and then thaw him out and and see if he walks again. Interesting. I don't. It's never been done. No. Otherwise, someone would have tried it. Right. And proved it. Said like, look, this I'm works. Sure it's been attempted. I have no doubt it's been attempted. Yeah. But if it was successful, we would have heard about it. Right, exactly. And that's um, I, Jurassic Park, I think, is closer to the mark. Like, will you be able to extract DNA right. from some very old that animal? That was 
quote unquote frozen in the right in the, 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 the sap. Right, yeah, the sap, yeah. the frozen, and then and then rebuild mm. genetically. That to me seems way more plausible. Yeah, yeah. If there's any DNA left in a frozen body, you right. can extract that. That makes sense. Yeah, that that's that that gives you a building block yeah. of what that animal. But, you know, waiting for a, a lightning storm that just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, poor Ted Williams. It's it's a funny thing. You know, this this guy's a legend. I literally drove through the Ted Williams tunnel the other day. And While you were writing this, wow, what a coincidence! It was a, it was a very for inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I was inspired to just drive through that tunnel. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss a thing. Plus, it's free wherever you get your podcasts. Also, it helps us a lot if you post a review for us on Apple Podcasts, even if you just click on the stars for us in the podcast app. When you spread the word, more strange stories come in, and we keep bringing you the weird. We'd like to thank our sponsors. Thank you to our Patreon patrons. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think. Mm-hmm.